Hello, welcome to this talk about HVC decoding in the mainline kernel. Uh, so today I will talk to you about uh, the rocky way to become a stable API for HVC support. So some word about me. Uh, my name is Benjamin Genia. I'm senior software engineer at Collabora. I'm focusing on multimedia topics since a few years now. And you can reach me at my uh, professional address. Uh, so in the agenda, uh, I will talk to you about some video for Linux concept, uh, the HVC spec, uh, the HVC video for Linux API, and finally HVC API destaging, and uh, is what is what is uh, we are targeting for that. Uh, so uh, let me introduce you some video for Linux concepts that we are using to uh, uh, perform HVC decoding uh, with the stateless decoder API. So first, uh, we have to, you have to know that we have a stateful and stateless codecs in the video for Linux. Both are memory-to-memory -memory codecs. Uh, so basically, for the stateful video decoder, uh, you take the raw bit stream and you send it without any uh, external uh, passing to the uh, to the hardware. So the CPU is more or less not involved. There is no uh, stack in user runs. Uh, just type the put the type of the bit stream and send it to the hardware. For stateless video decoder, uh, you need uh, the VStream need to be passed, decoded, and some and information extract from it before being sent to the to the hardware decoder. Uh, so the stateful uh, flow uh, is quite simple. You take the compressed data, you extract the VStream, and you send it through the kernel API to a stateful uh, video decoder uh, hardware video decoder. Uh, so you basically you only have to type. Uh, put a type on the B stream and send it to an hardware piece, hardware block that will decode it. Or maybe there is some firmware involved in the uh, with the hardware block, but it's more or less a black box. You send it and it, every everything is decoded in the black box and you get a, a decoded frame from it. For the state flow, uh, stateless API, the flow is quite different. Uh, you still have your compressed data where you get a bit stream, but that's involved to use a software parser to uh, to extract the data needed to perform frame decoding with the hardware, so with a stateless video hardware decoder. So the software parser is in charge to uh, extract the data, for example, to get uh, uh, the slice or the frame uh, from uh, from the bit stream to also extract the uh, additional parameters like uh, list that you want to fill, the number of reference, uh, the parameters that you want to apply, uh, everything has to be prepared by the software and user run. So that means that the kernel API is quite more complex since you have to define more uh, structured data and uh, uh, flow uh, inside the decoder. And all this must be done in parallel uh, with, uh, with the software decoder and some to the hardware to be able to, to perform one decoded frame. Um, so um, for that, thanks to video for Linux, uh, we have now some what they call a control. Uh, so there are user settable parameters. Uh, they could be enumerated per device. So it's quite a user non friendly since uh, for each device you can know uh, which parameter are supported or not, which control are supported or not by the device. Uh, there is parameter with range, type, and steps. Uh, so you can define what you want uh, in the um, what you what is needed for your hardware to, to understand and what are the range of the value accepted, what are the steps in the values that you can accept it, and you can put a type on it. Uh, Videophonics aim to define control for specific purpose and to avoid duplication. It means, for example, that uh, if you want uh, to create a brightness or uh, control for your camera as that already exists and you don't have to, you can, you can reuse uh, generic control and not define a control, specific control for your hardware. Uh, that said, uh, the driver could also define custom control for this very specific need. So it's a very open, uh, but there is a really a goal in the video for this community to uh, uh, keep the things as generic as possible and as common as possible to not uh, create a fork each time and not uh, have too much specific control for the device. Uh, the other uh, concept that we will use for HVC decoder is a request API. 
uh, so there is one request per buffer uh, uh, in the video for Linux. Uh, in one request, you can embed multiple controls. Uh, so that allow you to uh, do, uh, let's say, a more or less atomic uh, decoding per frame. You can set the control for each frame. You can set uh, the value, uh, the parameters, the extra data or metadata, you can call them like this, for each buffer. Uh, and the user space can schedule in advance several requests with different control and value. Uh, so that's very useful uh, for video decoding uh, when you want to be able to set uh, specific data, metadata uh, per frame. And this allows to configure the pipeline uh, on per frame basis uh, so you don't have to flush all the pipe. And that also can be used for camera if you want to set a brightness or autofocus or anything is really a, a fine grain control, a per frame control and uh, that is really what we need uh, for video decoding. So with addition of the video for Linux control that really helps us to define an API. Um, so some word about HVC uh, specification uh, that we know. So HVC stands for High Efficiency Video Decoding. Uh, it's also another name of H265. Uh, basically, they are the same concept of than uh, the previous codex, so the H264. Uh, but now uh, in HVC, uh, uh, you have uh, DCT, so Discrete Continuous Transform, and DCS for discrete sinus transform, which was not the case for H264. Uh, the plug size also uh, are more viable now with this new codex. Uh, so from up to uh, 4 to 4 to up to uh, 32 to 32. Uh, this, this, all these are allowed to have a better compression uh, rate for the same quality, video quality. Uh, because you have more uh, transform way of, of encoding the data and you can more adjust uh, the macro box uh, size, so you can have a better compression with a, with the same quality or at least the same quality, uh, even more quality. Uh, so each specification are, are available. Uh, so it's defined all the syntax of the items of the HVC of the value uh, and all the decoding process uh, in, the, in the in the spec. So the spec is quite huge. Uh, and you have a lot of things inside uh, to perform either decode or encoding uh, with HVC. Uh, so now it's time to speak about uh, uh, Video for Linux API. Uh, so the first question is how uh, to define the API. Um, first, we have to define the need of the hardware accelerator to, decode, to perform the decoding process. Uh, so with, with one video for this request, we will add we will have uh, multiple control to decode one frame, and uh, and what we want is that this control and this request does not rely only on one hardware block. It means that the API must be generic and not uh, fit only to one hardware uh, specification. Um, so that that is very important to give something. Uh, generic and uh, stable in the time. We also want to be as close as possible as HVC specification uh, in the field naming, in the parameter type, in structure content. Uh, that's important to be able to implement correctly and to easily find uh, what is in specification and how uh, we have implemented in the API. Uh, so to give you an example of uh, decoding process as is defined in the, uh, in the specification uh, that is a slight decoding process only a few parts on the left you have only a a one parameter to decode one uh, uh, parameter of, uh, of the HVC spec uh, so it's quite huge you have quite of uh, different types and uh, condition to, to give the value uh, of one parameter in the API. So this parameter, for example, is a picture of the cones that give you, uh, let's say, an ID, an unit ID for uh, for each frame, and then you can refresh, uh, refer to that ID uh, to find the key frame or on which frame frame we are using. So that's a very a very important parameter. Uh, but as you can see, it's very difficult to do that, and there is a lot of condition. So we can't do that in the kernel and we do that in userland 
and this one will generate one parameter to the API. So um, all the question is how to define all the parameters in the API given what we have in the uh, in the in the spec. And there is already quite a progress on this uh, since the HVC API is quite already quite huge. So uh, uh, more than 250 uh, uh, lines. There is one pixel format for the HVC, obviously. And uh, there is already seven control and seven associated structures for them, uh, 50 uh, flags, and more than 100 fields and parameters that are already defined. And the API is used by two drivers, Cedrus and Antro hardware block from very silicon. Um, HVC API is in staging directory. Uh, because maybe uh, the API is not yet complete, then we can discuss that. Uh, but the good thing is that with the API in staging, we are able to share and work together uh, to improve it. So that's really a good point to say, okay, we put it in the staging, it's not maybe ready, but that allows everybody to, to propose this patch, to review and to make it evolve. The drawback is that the API is not stable. So user space, like the streamer, FFMP, could be misaligning uh, for each kernel version. So uh, from developer point of view, it's very difficult to follow uh, because you can you have each time you the kernel is progressing, uh, your user line could be misaligning and you, got, you may have a value server and not easy to deploy and you lost a lot of time to re time to realign uh, your kernel your user line given uh, the kernel version, as that could be really peaceful. So uh, that leads us to the question of how this stage or move it to stable the API. What is involved to get it out of staging? Uh, we need maybe to prove its maturity. Uh, so for that, uh, we use conformance test like Fluster. Uh, we, we expect it to have more hardware block using it. Uh, and we need to get uh, a full stack, including the user space. But that's more or less a chicken and its problem since not why it's not in stable, the user space uh, will not always uh, deliver uh, a full stack and, uh, and uh, to, to prove that it's working. Uh, what also can we do, what can we do also to move it off st all the staging? Cover the, the specification. Uh, that is a good point, but the specifications are quite huge. Uh, cover all the hardware blocks needs. That's one point, but we only have two hardware, so I will show that if we cover the needs for those two hardware, we will cover the needs for all the incoming hardware. Not sure. So, uh, first, uh, for a few words about Fluster. Uh, Fluster is a Python tool developed by Fluendo to test uh, the conformance from of uh, multiple uh, codecs. Uh, so, if, for example, you can test uh, uh, VP8, VP9, H264, and H265. Um, it works by comparing the result of the deco your decoding to a reference and do the section uh, checksum of uh, MD5 uh, checksum of the result. Uh, it's very easy to have decoder run test. So very helpful to, to perform that. So basically, we have with Fluster, we have a conformance test tool. We allow us to run all the same uh, streams and we, with a well-known uh, stream. And Fluster gives you a score at the end of your run. Uh, and you know which uh, stream are, are passed or failed or are OK or skip it. And uh, that gives us a way to uh, to prove that the software is not regressing, and that we are also progressing in the implementation of in the, of the spec. So the it specification, uh, with its name uh, from ITU, uh, is more than 600 pages uh, of description of HVC syntax and decoding process. Uh, so it's quite huge. It's quite large. Everything is, is inside. Uh, the process are very well defined for decoding and uh, so we try to keep a video phonics API uh, name and structure everything field and fly as close as possible of the specification in terms of naming of type and of structure content 
so that makes the specific the API we can rely on the API of on on the ETU specification and make the link easily together. And also there is a quite effort in the documentation uh, to uh, say on on which on each flag on each structure on what uh, what is the chapter or what is the, the reference in the in, in the specification. Uh, we have two hardware blocks that are using uh, used to decode uh, HVC, so Cedrus and multiple version of on very cool very second on true hardware and which is embedded in multiple uh, socks. Uh, so with the mainline API and the latest patches, uh, we are able to cover all the hardware capabilities uh, of those uh, of those hardware blocks. Uh, so that means that uh, uh, the API is quite um, cover the uh, the hardware needs for now. So that is us to the question: um, Is it time to move it to stable? Uh, to summarize, we have an API used by two hardware blocks and multiple socks. Uh, an API used by Gestrunner and FFmpeg. We have a conformance test with Fluster. We are fairly complete to, uh, compared to the ETU specification. So um, the question is, what else do we need to move it to stable? Uh, do we need more hardware? Do we need more uh, user land? Uh, do we need to cover uh, more the ETU specification? Uh, so uh, that are the question uh, how that we can find uh, we can talk after in the chat and uh, I hope you we give an answer and we can give you a road uh, to move it to stay to stable uh, so I will take the question in the chat right after thank you